Shalom and welcome back to Light to the Nations channel. It's a real veraja to be once again with you, sharing a, a new study of the Bebar of Yahuwah, sharing with you the light of Yahuwah that I have been receiving directly from him. You know, it's been a long time since the last uh, moment uh, that I posted a, a video uh, in the channel. Just to be precise, it's around four weeks and a little bit more, I think, since the last post. And believe me, it's been uh, a, a long time. I felt it uh, as a long, long time. Uh, I think I told you in the past I really love uh, doing this. I really like being uh, able to share with you uh, what I received directly from our Abba. Uh, only by study, he's the bar, uh, looking for the truth over there. It's a real blessing, it's a real veraja for me. And I really missed it to, to share the, and have this opportunity to share more, more studies uh, with you. Uh, I want to thanks all of you that uh, have been send, sending emails to me, asking about me, asking about uh, the studies, missing new videos in the channel. Uh, those of you that are keeping me in your prayers, uh, I, I really, I really want to want to give thanks to all of you for your love and your for following these studies. I think I I mentioned this in the past, uh, and you know uh, I have a full time secular job, and the reality is that in the last four weeks uh, uh, it was very time demanding, uh, full of uh, complexities and, and, and difficulties. Uh, so, so that was mainly the reason why so many silence from my side. But uh, the important thing is that here we are again uh, with an important topic that we will discuss and we will share today. Uh, and the important thing is that uh, even uh, during this time of uh, travels, during this time of lack of time, basically, uh, Yahuwah has been very good to me, uh, like always, he's so awesome that um, even during these this, uh, difficulties, I have been found uh, sometimes to keep reading the Devar of Yahuwah, to keep searching for the truth, to mostly to be meditating in a lot of topics uh, as part of these studies, as part of this series. And even I have been able, uh, thanks to him only, all the praise to him, um, to discover new things that I wasn't able to see before. And those things are so important because our key pieces in the studies that we, we are doing together related to the last days, to the end times. And some of those are go I'm going to share with you in the video today. And other other things I'm gonna be sharing with you in coming videos, uh, but those are really important topics because it's gonna help us to unlock more truth in order to see more things about what's coming to the earth, what's gonna happen very soon to the to the entire entire world, and and, and it's it's important to see it. Uh, and you know the important the important aspect of all of that is that. This is coming directly from the source of the truth, the Devar of Yahuwah. You know, one of the topic, uh, the topic basically that we will discuss today is regarding the, um, the analysis of Sefer Hasson. This is the book of Revelation chapter 12. Uh, we already started in the, in the part 10 analyzing this uh, amazing and an important prophecy. And, and you know, we are getting close closer and closer to important events uh, in the Shaman, in the sky, signs in the sky. Uh, the first one is the total solar uh, eclipse that is coming on August 21st. And also this great sign that uh, is going to happen on the Shaman in the heaven on September 23. And because of that, I, I, I have had the opportunity to see that there are many people uh, talking about this, uh, more and more the videos every day in YouTube sharing about this topic. Uh, some of them with very important information, uh, other with uh, not that uh, interesting information and actually 
given given information that is basically leading people in another direction about these signs and and you know uh, i have been telling you that we need to use all inputs we need to be searching for the truth all the time we need to listen and read everything but we need to always let the ruach hakodesh to guide us in all the studies and you know, no matter that some of those videos and some of those comments and studies are bringing so important and interesting information, there's some important aspect that I am um, missing on those studies. And that important aspect is this one. The scripture, the Devar of Yahuwah. Most of those studies are basing uh, all the information mostly on the comments of men and women and information on the news or basing the uh, using as a fundament the information that they are finding outside the Devar of Yahuwah and actually it is written and I have been sharing this information with you it's, it's written in the Devar of Yahuwah that is, is a cures the man that is uh, trusting in other men and not trusting in Yahuwah. We need to put our trust in Yahuwah. And we can. We have to use all the principles that I have been sharing with you throughout all the series, all the videos, in order to search for the truth only here. Because here is, is the place where we are going to find the truth. Here is the place where we are going to be able to understand the prophecies. We need to let the scripture to speak by itself. We need to find the answers directly here. We don't need to find, we don't need to look for the answers outside. Because it's the Ruach HaGodesh, the one that is going to guide us and help us to understand and search for the truth only here. For sure, we need to use the inputs from every person. We need to use the input of all sources. But everything we need to test it under the light of the Devar of Yahuwah. Because the truth, we will find it here. All the rest is just addition, that it will, it will help us to understand the times that we are living. But the truth and the answers that we are looking for, for the prophecies especially, and for these days, we need to find it here. And this is exactly that we are, what we are going to do today, in the same way that we have been doing it in previous videos. We will look for the answers to all the questions just on the Devar of Yahuwah. Okay? So, like always, my invitation for you is that uh, take your scriptures because you don't need to watch all of this video. You need to study with me during this video. So, take your scriptures because we are going to have a combination between a presentation and also reading directly the Devar of Yahuwah. Actually, I have some, some notes here in my, my notebook just to... Just to uh, be using it as part of the of the study today so take some some paper as well in order to take your own notes as i told you you don't need to put the trust on men and that's also uh, counting me don't put your trust on me just use the input the light that i'm i'm, I'm sharing with you uh, use it as an input in order to do your own research you need to pray all the time you need to pray to yahuwah to guide your studies to guide your steps in order to confirm in your heart that the, uh, if the words that I'm sharing with you, that I'm speaking to you, are the truth or if I'm speaking by myself. So that's always the test you need to do with any source of information. And the most important thing is used, again, the Devar of Yahuwah with the principles that I have been sharing with you using the Ruach of Nebuah the spirit of prophecy, this is the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. This is the first thing that we review in the first video of this series. And it's exactly the same principle with the two or three witnesses that we have been using as well since the video one till now is the same one that we are going to use now and we are going to use in any study. And it's exactly the same principles that you need to use always when you are searching for the truth. Okay, uh, so before starting, I want to share with you uh, an experience I have this weekend by talking to my dad. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this in the past, but um, uh, my dad is a pastor. Uh, he started in Christianity 
since he was 16 years old. Uh, today he just um, got uh, 71 years old. So you can imagine his entire life he has been serving Yahuwah. Uh, he doesn't follow Torah. Uh, he is still in Christianity, but he is a... Uh, always have had a different mentality from Christianity. Actually, he, he suffered some persecution in the seminaries and from the other pastor most of the time because of the way that he was uh, seeing the scripture and the truth of the God of Yahuwah. Uh, so no matter that he is not following Torah, I have my emunah very strong in my heart that sooner or later he will find the truth he will understand that we need to follow the old path, the path of Yahuwah. So my, my, my dad has been always having spiritual experiences since he was a kid. He, he has been telling me so many stories he, uh, since he was a kid about the spiritual experiences. So um, this weekend on Sunday, we were speaking about prophecies. This is one of the, the, the topics that he likes very much. We started to talk about it on, on Saturday and after Shabbat. Um, and we continued the, the discussion, the conversation on Sunday. And, you know, he got so interested on, on what we discussed on the, on, on, on after the Shabbat because I was sharing with him my understanding about who is Babylon, who, what is the identity of the woman on the, on Revelation 12. We were discussing about the stars and the signs on the Shemaim, all those kind of things. And he got so interested that uh, he came back on, on Sunday on duty lunch and we were, we continue talking about those topics. And, and what happened during that discussion is that um, he told me uh, once again a dream that he had long time ago. And, and why was I once again? Because uh, I know by heart this, this dream because it's not the first time that he's telling, uh, telling it to me. But uh, you know what happened this Sunday was uh, something different. Uh, a, a light turned on in my head in the moment when he mentioned the dream again. And immediately I received a connection in my heart and in my mind about how that dream that he had around 30 to 40 years ago is related to what's going on in our time, in this year, in our, in our days. So... Basically, the dream he had, and again, it's important, it, this happened 30 to 40 years ago. He was in a dream, and he believed, he listened that the, he heard the voice of Yahuwah telling him two specific things. And what he heard was the following. This is the time of the Pleiades, and this is the time of the sign of Jonah. So, this is the time of the Pleiades. Or prepare yourself, this is the, the time of the Pleiades, and this is the time of the sign of Jonah. He came on Sunday when he, he was speaking to me about what he was, the, the connection he was doing with the part of the Pleiades. But the moment that the, the light turned on in my head is when he mentioned about the sign of Jonah. And you know, as I told you, I have heard this dream several times in the past. But now when he mentioned about the sign of Jonah, immediately what I felt in my heart, I remember in my heart and in my mind that lately I have been hearing about the total solar eclipse that's going to happen on, on Monday, on August 21st, that the people are, are calling it the sign of Jonah. So, and why is that? And most probably you know already this information. It's because there are some historical records that during the time of Jonah in the city of Nineveh, there was a total solar eclipse. So that's why the people is talking about that this is the sign of Jonah. And you know, that's, that's the connection and the light that turned on in that moment. How amazing is that a dream that happened 30 to 40 years ago, directly from Yahuwah, in this case to my dad talking about the sign of Jonah, something that the people is talking about now. I know that from the scripture point of view, the sign of Jonah is something different. The, the sign of Jonah is the three days and three nights in the, the belly of the fish. It's the same thing that we were discussing as part of the dead burial and resurrection of Yahushua HaMashiach series. 
But it's not coincidence that the people is talking and mentioning that this eclipse is called the sign of Jonah in the same way that my dad heard this 30 to 40 years ago in a dream. And you know, why Why the, this the, caught my attention and this light turned on? Because we know that this solar eclipse that is coming on, on 21st of August uh, is going to be seen throughout the entire U.S. territory. Okay? And there is an important connection of uh, this sign of Yona or this eclipse to what happened with the preaching of Yona in the city of Nineveh. And I have to share this with you uh, very soon, I hope, in a new video. What is the real uh, place of America, the U.S., in Bible prophecy? And it's my belief that what's going to happen is not a coincidence. It's related, it's a confirmation. That's what I felt when I was talking to my dad this weekend. It's a confirmation of the place of the U.S. in the prophecies of the last days. The U.S. has a an specific and special place on the prophecies. And this is something that I will share with you in a coming video. That is gonna, I hope it's going to be very easy to see it. And when, when we study this, you are going to understand my words now. Why this total solar eclipse is a kind of confirmation of the place of America in the prophecies of the scripture. So it's important that we need to watch at all times, as we already saw in many scriptures throughout this entire series. It's important that we need to be awake and we need to be sober. We need to see everything that's going on around us, everything that's happening on the, on the world. But the most important thing is that we need to test and we need to look into this with the light, under the light of the Devar of Yahuwah. And this is one of the main purposes of this study, of this series, because we are building the, the main objective, and it's important for you to, to keep it in mind, is that we are building a timeline with the sequence of events of the end times. We are trying to understand directly from the Devar of Yahuwah the chronology of the events of the end times, and also to identify the signs that is going to help us to understand when each one of those events are going to happen. That's the entire purpose of this series. So it's very important that, uh, again, as I told you at the beginning, don't watch this video only. You need to study with me. We need to study together in order to understand everything that is happening because there is no doubt in my heart that we are living on the end times. We are that generation. We are that generation that we are uh, the ones that are going to See, they are gonna, we are gonna see everything to be fulfilled, and we are already seeing it. Everything is, is uh, being fulfilled uh, before our eyes. You know, I think I haven't shared this with you, but uh, my work is so time demanding because I work in a multi multinational company of technology. And you know, I have been working in this uh, industry for several years. I have been a witness of how technology has been evolved and evolved in a so fast pace. And everything that we think that there is, we need so many years to be implemented, that's not true because the technology is ready and it's being implemented before our eyes and we are not able to see it because that's the way that everything has been implemented on the system of the world. They are introducing step by step, little by little, and we don't notice this. And when we start getting start getting use of new stuff, new things, later it's very difficult to get rid of them because it's part of, of our day to day. And you know, little by little, everything is moving forward in order to have the, the baseline for the system of the beast. The system of the beast is already here. The only point is that there are some specific pieces that are missing in order to see it clearly with our own eyes. Everything and all the world, all the technology is pushing for digital. Everything, all the technologies, all the society is moving to digital. 
with the social networks, with the technology, everything is online now. Even the currency is online, it's electronic with the cryptocurrencies. Everything is related to the system of the beast. The only thing that is missing, and it's all already uh, under discussion in the United Nations, is to implement a universal di digital ID. You know, every time that you do any, tra any kind of transaction, in the in internet online you need a user and a password and you need a user and a password for the different places and the different sites so there's no control there's no security the only thing that is missing in order uh, in order to have the security and the control uh, from from the part of the governments is to implement a universal digital id they are going to assign to you they want to assign to you a universal ID. This ID is going to be your number any place you, walk, you go. And it's going to be the number that you are going to use for any transaction online. It's going to be the number that you're gonna, you are going to use in your social, in the social networks and in any application is the number that is going to be your identity in the internet, in the technology. And this is already under discussion and it's already being implemented in India. It's just a matter for you to take a look in the news, to take a look on what's going on and take a look that the world is going in that direction. And this direction is basically the baseline in order to prepare the coming of the system of the beast that is already here. It's basically the system of the beast in order to take control over the entire world. Everything, all of that is happening under our eyes. And it didn't happen in the past. I know that most of the people in the past have been talking about that the Jesus is coming or we are living in the end times. I hear this from my dad. I, I hear this from my, from, from my granddad and so on. I saw, saw you as well, most probably. But never in the time, never in any generation before ours, the people saw what we are seeing now, the increase on low, lawlessness, how the society is moving in a totally opposite direction, direction of, uh, of the way, the path of Yahuwah. We see how for those that we, as us, that, that we want to follow the path of Yahuwah, we are getting persecuted and we are, we are getting uh, um, some kind of re rejection even from the closer ones to us. So everything is said. It's just a matter of few things to happen in order to see the fulfillment of most of the scriptures that are already pending. So, as the scripture sir, says, we are of the light, as it's written by Shaul in Thessalonikim, Thessalonians. We are of the light and not of the darkness. So, if we are of the light, everything that is going to happen is not going to take us by surprise. Because we need to be awake, we need to be ready. We need to know the time and the seasons. So important that we pray all the time to Yahuwah because he is the only one that's going to help us during this time of trouble, during this challenging time, but at the same time, amazing times. Because as soon as we see things happening, it's because the time of our redemption is coming. Okay? So... We will study with the, we will start with this study and as you as I told you in this video we will cover the part number 11 is basically we will continue with the analysis of Sefer Hasson 12 this is the book of Revelation chapter 12 and specifically in this video we will talk about something very important and it's about the sign of the woman in the Shammai okay we already saw in the in the uh, previous video, in the video number ten, the details of the of this um, this prophecy in Revelation twelve. And you know we have all the information is in the book of Revelation chapter twelve from the verse one to the seventeen. And since since we already reviewed it in details and we read it and during the the part ten, I'm not gonna do it um, again in this video. And a difference, a difference from the previous uh, videos that in this one specifically, we are not going to continue building the timeline. In this video, we will uh, put the focus or our attention 
in understand what is the sign and what's the meaning of the sign. There are so many people talking that this sign means that the rapture is going to happen. Other people that are saying that no, this sign is related to the end of the world. Other people saying that no, this is the sign that the day of Yahuwah is going to happen. So we are going to answer that question. What's the meaning of the sign looking directly on the Devar of Yahuwah? Okay, so as I told you in the previous video, in the part number 10, the proper way to understand Revelation 12 is just to recognize that there are two stories in the same chapter. There's one specific story, as we saw in the previous video, that is from the verse 1 to the verse 6, and a second part that is basically retelling in a different way with more details uh, the events that are going to happen in the Shemaim and also on the earth. And this is coming from the verse 7. It's happening from the verse 7 to the verse 17. So when we, when we take a look on details on that, we can see that from the verse 1 to verse 6, this is related directly to the description of the signs in the Shemaim. And not only that, because it's also providing identifiers and keys. What for? Those identifiers and keys are the ones that are helping us to recognize and understand the identity of the woman. Okay? We are going to put our focus in this video from the verse 1 to the verse 6. Because what we saw from the verse 7 to the verse 17 in the, in the video number 10, in the part number 10 of the series, is that everything that we see over there are the events, the detailed events that are going to happen on the Shemaim and also on the year, those events related to the signs that we see in the previous verses. So we already review in details this, this part, so we are not gonna we are not gonna do it now. So we are gonna put our focus on the first part uh, of the chapter that this is coming from the verse one to the verse six is the description of the signs in the Shemaim. So just to just to remind the timeline that we we saw on the previous video on the final the, the last timeline we have already. So we can see here is that the the amazing confirmation that the sign of the dragon is basically Satan, Satan himself coming from the Shemaim to the earth. And we saw how amazing this is uh, connected and, and in harmony with the other uh, chapters of the scriptures that we were reviewing in the previous videos with the fight of Michael, Michael standing up as the Daniel chapter 12 is talking about. Um, we saw that this Michael, the one restrainer, the beast, restraining the beast to, to come up to the, to the earth. Uh, and we see how Michael is fighting the dragon as part of Revelation 12. And as soon that uh, the dragon is thrown out, uh, thrown down to the earth, is the dragon the one persecuting the woman? And we saw amazingly how the woman flee into the wilderness where she's going to be protected for 1260 days. In the same way, in the same du du duration, is that the great tribulation is going to happen because we already saw this in the different videos and the different passages of the scripture. And the important thing is that it's during the same period of time that the beast, the first beast, has the authority for 42 months. That is exactly the same like 1260 days. And it's exactly the same amount of time that the two witnesses are going to provide their witness, their prophecies in Jerusalem for 1260 days. And it's exactly the same period of time during the Great Tribulation that Jerusalem is going to be under the dominion of the nation. This part is so important to keep it in mind because what's going to happen in Jerusalem is a key in order to understand other aspects of the prophecies. So keep that in mind. Keep this timeline in mind. You need to consult this timeline because this is not just a matter of interpretation. We are, we are building this timeline just reading the Devar of Yahuwah, just reading the different keys in order to open the understanding 
and just to connect connecting all those keys just to see what's the chronology of events of the end times and as we saw in the in the previous videos uh, video in the part number 10 is satan himself that's gonna come down to the earth um, masquerading himself as a messenger of light and we are already uh, the system of the beast has already programmed us in order to believe in this aliens invasion and so on and that's why so many people are talking about that and all the time new movies are coming to to our te uh, television talking about the same thing just to prepare our minds and prepare the minds of the entire world uh, to what's going to happen and what they're going to see and we saw already as a confirmation from the god of yahuwah is that the dragon shatan satan himself is the one that he's going to bring the first beast with powers of lies, with falsehood and wonderful signs in order to lead astray those that are not following the truth, those that are not loving the truth of Yahuwah. That's why we need to put our armor, we need to we need to be strong and we need to put our trust in Yahuwah. We need to make a stand for Yahuwah. This is the moment in order to prepare our heart and our mind for what is coming. Because it's not going to be in that moment. We need to prepare ourselves now in order to make the stand of Yahuwah and to make the choice to follow Yahuwah, to follow Mashiach and follow his steps because he is directing and leading us in the way, in the right way, in the right path, the path of Yahuwah. So this is the moment in order to prepare our heart because the time that is coming is going to be complicated and it's going to be a test for all of us because as we saw, the, the purpose of the great distress is in order to uh, refine, is for refinement of his people. Those that are not going to be prepared is going to be a refinement for them. And as we saw in the last part of the previous video, is that we see, we saw that it's going to be two groups of people. One that is represented by the woman is going to be protected during this period of time and another group of people that is going to be the remnant of her seed the seed of the woman that is going to be persecuted by the dragon and those ones are going to be under the distress of the great tribulation we don't know who is going to be part of which group so that's why as is written in lucas in, in the book of luke we need to pray at all time in order to be find uh, to be found worthy to escape of all things that are going to happen that's what we need to do and we need to put our trust in Yahuwah. So as part of what we saw as well in the previous video is that all of this that I already explained and, and, and repeat to you is going to be triggered by a specific great sign. And this sign is the sign of the woman as we can see over here. It's after the sign of the woman is seen in the sky, in the Shemaim, is that everything that is coming later about the dragon is going to happen. So the first thing, the first thing that is triggering all of that is the sign of the woman. You know, as part of what I, I was able to see uh, during the, the last few weeks uh, is, uh, and understand during the last few weeks is changing a little bit the timeline. And I, at the end of this video, I will share with you what is the updated timeline because this will help us to see where the sign of the woman really is on this timeline that we have in the screen. Because what I can tell you with certainty now, that the sign of the woman is not in the place that we, we draw it in the last time. It's in a different place and I will share it with you at the end of this video. Okay? So let's continue because we have many things to, to check uh, today. So as I told you, we will focus our attention in the description of the signs in the Shemaim and also we will identify what are the keys and the identifiers uh, that are, are helping us to understand the, um, the identity of the woman. Uh, today in this video we are not going to talk about the identity of the woman. This is coming in the next video and it's so amazing and I was able to find the answer for the identity of the woman just two weeks ago, studying, studying during a Shabbat. And it's so amazing because actually I started to read this in a business trip when I was coming back to my home. 
uh, and during the flight I was reading the Bara Viejua, I was able to understand what's the identity of the woman. And it's something that I didn't, I haven't, I didn't see in the past. And it's so amazing because it's giving us more information about the different groups and the different promises that Yahua and Yahushua is given to the people. Um, I'm not going to share it with you now because we have other aspects important in order to see in this video is just to understand the real meaning of the sign. But as soon as possible, I will share with you what's the identity of the woman. Okay, what I can tell you now that it's not the church and this is something that we need to understand that there is not such a thing, such a thing like the church. It's just his people and this is coming from the religion, it's coming from the Christianity that they want to make the difference between Israel, his people and the church because we are grafted in the olive tree. We are part of his people when we are, when we, when we are in Yahushua HaMashiach, when we believe in Yahushua HaMashiach, we become part of his people, Israel. So it's not the church, but also I can tell you that it's not Israel either. I was believing until two weeks ago that the woman was Israel, but it's not Israel. And it's so amazing and not difficult to see it if we open our eyes when we read the scripture just to understand who really the woman is. Okay, so we will take a look on that in more details in a coming videos just to understand what's the real identity of that woman on Revelation 12. So what we are going to see, and, and as, as you can see it now, is basically we have a, from the verse 1 to the verse 3, uh, we have we can do a, an, a, an additional split basically and the, from the verse 1 and to the verse 3 we we see specifically the signs the description of the signs in the Shemaim and from the verse 4 to the verse 6 is where we uh, can see the identifiers and the keys those keys and identifiers that are helping us to recognize and understand the identity of the woman so, as I told you, we will put our attention just from the verse 1 to the verse 3, just to understand this sign, the sign of the woman. What is this sign of the woman? And also, after that, we will put our focus in order to understand what's the real meaning of the sign of the Shammai. So, let's read it together. It says in the verse 1, And a great sign was seen in the Shammai, a woman clad with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And being pregnant, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign was seen in the Shemaim, and see, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and in ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. So, what we see here is basically, as I told you, the description of two signs in the Shemaim. So we see the sign of the woman and we see the sign of the dragon. We already covered what's the meaning of the sign of the dragon in the part number 10. If you have not watched that part, please go and watch that part because it's quite important. And even more, if you have not watched uh, the other parts of this series, it's important. I invite you to do it. I know that it's uh, time consuming to see all the videos, but we have been going little by little in the different videos in order to open the understanding and see how everything is connected and in order to build this timeline. So it's important that you follow the sequence because it's going to help you to understand the topics that we are reviewing and discussing and studying now. So we see that the description we have in Revelation 12 from verse 1 to verse 3 is talking about two signs in the Shemaim. The first sign is the sign of the woman, is a pregnant woman that is in pain and is ready to give birth because she's in labor. But there is other descriptions because we see the luminaries in this description of the woman. We see that she's clad with the sun. We see that the moon is under her feet. And also we see the description that there, she's having a crown of 12 stars over her head. This is important because those are the keys to understand 
the sign in the Shamaim. Those are not the keys to understand the identity of the woman. Somehow it's helping us, but not uh, di directly. Okay? So all of those uh, descriptions that we see over here are the ones helping us to understand where to see and what to see or where to look for this sign. And the second sign is the one that we review in details in the part 10. is about the sign of the great, great fury dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his heads. And as we saw in the part 10, this is the devil, this is the serpent of all, this is Shatan, Satan, coming from the Shaman to the, to the earth. Because we saw in the part 10 is that Satan is not living in hell like Christianity always believed. Satan is the prince of the, uh, is the prince of the air. He is living on the air on the sky. And we saw different uh, uh, witnesses in the part number 10 just to confirm this understanding. So let's put our focus in the first sign. This is the, the purpose of this video, the part 11. So basically what we see here is a sign of a woman. But the important thing is that where this sign will be located. It is written, it's a great sign seen in the Shemaim. And we see the description that is talking about the three luminaries, the sun, the moon, and the stars. So in order to understand this sign and see this sign, we need to look up. In order to find this sign, we need to look to the Shemaim. We need to look to the sky in order to see the sign over there. So we see here this sign is a woman in the sky uh, and we see the luminaries over here. So this is also a key to understand what is this sign. So let's review what the scripture is telling us and, and giving us this information about the luminaries and the connection with the end time prophecies. So we find the first, uh, the first aspect uh, from Yahushua himself, Mashiach telling us that there will be signs in the Shemaim as part of the end times. And one of the witnesses, we see it here in the book of Lucas, book of Luke, chapter 21 to uh, verse 25. And it says the following, And there shall be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth and of nations, and bewilderment meant uh, the roaring of the sea and agitation. So Yahushua, is telling us that it's going to be signs in the luminaries as part of the signs of the end times. There is going to be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. So we need to look up in the same way that we are uh, directed from the Revelation 12. We see in the words of Yahushua also telling us here that we need to look, look up to the sky to see those signs. And keep in mind, and we review this, I think, in the part number one of this series, that uh, the book of Revelation is the revelation received by Yahushua, directly from Yahuwah the Father. And Yahushua sent this revelation through a messenger, through a malach, an angel, to Yahuhanan, John the Apostle. So all the aspects that we see in the book of Revelation is the revelation of Yahushua, is the words, are the words of Yahushua. So if Yahushua is telling us in the chapter 12 of Revelation that there's going to be a great sign in the Shemaim, is the same information. He's uh, taking our attention to look to the sky in the same way that we see here in the testimony of Lucas when Yahushua was saying that there will be signs in the Shemaim, in the sun, the moon, and the stars. So also we saw, uh, we have seen this uh, with great detail in the calendar series is that Elohim made the sun, the moon, and the stars, and he made them for signs. And this we find it in the book of Bereshit, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, and it says the following. And Elohim said, Let lights come to be in the expanse in the Rekia of the Shemaim, the, the heaven, to separate the day from the night. And listen to this, and let them be for signs, or thought, and appointed times, Moedim, and for Yomim days, and Shanaim years, and let them, let them be for lights in the Rekia, the expanse of the Shemaim, to give light on the earth, and it came to be so. So Yahuwah himself, he created the lights 
with the purpose to serve as a thought, to serve as sign. One of the purposes of the luminaries, the sun, the moon, and the stars is to serve uh, for signs for us, because through those signs we will understand the plan of Yahuwah, as we will see in the next texts. So the same thing we see and we find in the in the in the Bar of Yahuwah, in the book of Job, that Elohim declares that He made the Masarot. He made the constellation. So if he made it, he made it with a purpose. And we are already seeing the purpose because of the signs, because of the times, because of the seasons, because of the years. Because through the calendar of Yahuwah, we can understand when everything is going to happen. And how, every, how all things are going to happen are going to be fulfilled. So we see in the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 31 to 33. It says the following, this is Yahuwah speaking to Job, asking this question just to make the point that he is the one that created everything. And he says the following in the 31, do you bind the bands of Kima? This is Pleiades. Or loosen the course of Kesil? This is Orion. Do you bring out the Masaro, the constellation in its season? Do you, or do you lead the bear with its sons? Do you know the laws of the Shemaim? Or do you set their rule over the earth? No, because Job uh, didn't do that. Is Yahuwah the one doing all of this? He's binding the bands of uh, Pleiades. He's losing the course of the Orion. He's bringing out all the Masarot in his season. And he's leaving the bear with his sons. He is the one that has put all the laws in the Shemaim for all the luminaries. As we see in the Sefer Hanoch in the book of Enoch. We see all the laws of the luminaries that Yahuwah appointed from the beginning of the times and all are also the same laws that have been working forever in all the luminaries. And we saw all the details that of that in the calendar series. If you have not watched that, go and take a look on that series because there is a lot of information about the luminaries. I know that I have pending information that I have not forgotten, but the information we have over there is so, so important. Okay, so let's continue. And we find this information also in the Sefer Yeshayahu. This is the book of Isaiah in the verse 40, in the chapter 40, verse 26. It says the following, lift up your eyes on high and see. This is Yahuwah speaking again. Who has created this? He's bringing out their host by number. Yahuwah is bringing out their host. The Sebaot, the stars by numbers. He, Yahuwah, calls them all by name. Yahuwah calls all the stars, all the luminaries by a specific name. This is what we are seeing and reading directly in the Devar of Yahuwah. By the greatness of ability and potent of power, a man is not lacking. Yahuwah has made all the constellations he has made all the luminaries with a purpose and a specific purpose. We need to understand that astrology is something totally different to the observation of the luminaries. Astrology is believing that the luminaries has, uh, have some kind of power upon us, over us. This is totally uh, forbidden by Torah because if we do that, we are missing the mark we are uh, going astray but we cannot be confused that observing the luminaries is part of what Yahuwah is teaching us we need to understand how the luminaries work we need to understand what's the purpose of the luminaries we need to observe the luminaries just to understand the signs the thought that Yahuwah is providing to us through the luminaries on the sky this is the real purpose because he created everything for a purpose and he assigned the man. He assigned his people in order to manage and administer the earth throughout all the signs, throughout all the calendar, throughout all the purpose that we see in the Devar of Yahuwah. So considering all of this, we find this important key in the words of the weak Hamelech. This is the King David. And it's, as it is written in the book, in the Sefer Tehillim, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 1 to verse 4. 
and it says the following, the Shemaim are proclaiming the esteem of Elohim. Listen to this. The Shemaim is proclaiming the kavod, the esteem of Yahuwah Elohim Sebaot. What an amazing purpose of the luminaries and the Shemaim. They are proclaiming the kavod, the esteem of Yahuwah. How we are not going to observe and understand the loss of the luminaries if those luminaries, the purpose they have is so amazing. Just to understand they and proclaim the steam of Yahuwah Sebaot. Okay? And let's continue. And the expanse, the Rukia is declaring the work of his hand. Listen to the verse 2. Day to day powers for speech. The Shamayim. Day to day. Every day with the sun, the sun is the luminary we see during the day, during the day. is powering forth speech. Speech of what? Of the steam of Yahuwah. Let's continue. And night to night reveals knowledge. And we know that knowledge is the fear of Yahuwah. So night by night we see the stars and the moon. The stars are the, and the moons are revealing knowledge, knowledge of the fear of Yahuwah, knowledge of the steam of Yahuwah. Let's continue, verse 3. There is no speech and there are not words because they don't have voice. We don't listen any voice from the, from the luminaries, but anyway they are providing a message. Their voice is not heard, it says, verse 4. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. The words, the message that we are being provided by the Shemaim and the luminaries, their words are coming and are, they are going to the end of the world. The message that we can see in the Shemaim is the message of the plan of Yahuwah. This is basically the Shemaim is the one revealing us the plan of Elohim until the end of the world. So I think I shared with you uh, these books in the part of the, um, the calendar series. So you have this book that is called The Witness of the Stars. Amazing book. And a similar one is this one that is called The Gospel in the Stars. And you also have this one that is called The Future in, is in the Stars. In these three books, you find amazing information. How the Masarot, the luminaries, are providing the message and the Besorah and the good news. How, by understanding the luminaries, we can understand the plan of Yahuwah from the beginning to the end of the world. So... If it's in the Shemaim that we see this knowledge and we find this knowledge and we find the steam of Yahuwah and through that knowledge we can understand also the Besorah and the good news. This is totally connected with what we are seeing in Revelation 12. So if the description of the sign is talking to us that is a woman in the Shemaim that is pregnant is clad with the sun, with the moon under her feet, with a crown of 12 stars over her head, where we can find a woman in, a, in, the, in the Shammai. And this is by understanding the Masarot is where we can find this woman in the Shammai.